What's happening guys? Keith here with another edition of the Impact Report. So we are just a few days removed from the Genesis TV special, which I thought was a very good show, and you can catch my review by clicking the link above me. Uh, not really a surprise, as I think Impact puts on a good show week to week. There's only one thing with the current product that I am not particularly fond of, and I know a lot of people agree with me on this, and that's the look in at matches from other promotions. This has nothing to do with either the bad production or anything of that nature, but I don't like the fact that we only get a couple minutes shown of the match. Like this past week, we got Taiji Ishimori versus Andrew Everett for the X Division Championship in Pro Wrestling Noah. We got four minutes out of a 15 minute match, and the purpose of these guys in the ring is to tell a story. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really getting the full full effect here with seeing four minutes of a match when I don't know what these guys are trying to do in the ring. Um, just a personal gripe of mine, but I think that what they should do is maybe show a quick highlight clip and say, hey, go to our YouTube page to check out this match in its entirety, something to that nature doesn't take up time on the broadcast and I think if people are able to see the entire matches they may look up the other product or maybe get a little more information on the wrestlers in the match but anyway enough of that so apparently Impact Wrestling has been interested in signing Jeff Cobb uh, this news broke I think late last week right after I did this it's not really news just a rumor right now but uh, apparently they were trying to bring him in for the Orlando tapings that took place earlier this month. They weren't able to put a deal together. Um, I think this would be a great signing for Impact, uh, even though he is 35 years old. He has been able to make a name for himself wherever he's gone, PWG. He started wrestling for New Japan a little in the later half of last year. And he also is with Lucha Underground. Now, with other talents in Impact, such as Johnny Impact, Taya, um, uh, Sammy Callahan, who was, they, if he continues to stick with Lucha Underground, this would have no, he would have no problems working with Impact as well. So, that would be good. Um, Impact has announced their first show that will be streamed on Twitch. Obviously, we saw the Barbed Wire Massacre last week but this is going to be wrestle pros brace for impact uh the show will feature wrestle pro stars versus impact wrestling stars and according to wrestle pro uh Tennille dashwood formerly known as emma in the wwe will be taking on angelina love in the main event uh there's been speculation that this won't be the last time that we will see emma or dashwood in impact wrestling uh, I think this would be a great signing if they do indeed pick her up. Uh, this is, I believe, her 90-day no-compete clause is up February 1st, so this will be the first time she will be doing anything post-WWE. I think signing her would definitely put eyes on the knockouts division and maybe give them the attention they deserve because they've always been doing great things and really never got the recognition for it. I know that what was talked about after she was released, that she was looking for a lot of money, and with Impact's cost-cutting, that may not be feasible. But speaking of the Knockouts division, uh, Ty Valkyrie did a interview with ChannelGuideMag.com, which uh, I had spoke about this website last week, that Chris Adonis had done an interview with them as well, which we kind of got a little more clarity into his reason for leaving Impact Wrestling. She basically went uh, in the interview, talked about the difference between her character in Lucha Underground and hers in Impact Wrestling, um, how her relationship with working with her soon-to-be husband, Johnny Impact, and basically uh, other things going on in her life and in the wrestling world. Uh, she also said that when she... when the next set of tapings start. She will be continuing her feud with Rosemary. Um, she said the unique adversary opens the door to a wealth of creative possibilities. I know a lot of people like myself were really looking forward to that match at Bound for Glory this past year, 
and unfortunately we did not get it, so hopefully we will. Uh, this week's episode of Impact drew 310,000 viewers, which was 1,000 viewers up from last week's 309,000, and it ranked 138 on Cable's Top 150. Uh, this is definitely positive strides for Impact. We're moving in the right direction. Um, as Josh Matthews pointed out at the end of the broadcast, that things are going to be looking a little different next week. Josh, I think that might be the understatement of the year as we will be going back to the four-sided ring next week, and new slew of talent, new a whole lot of stuff coming our way, which I am very excited for, and I'm sure most of you are. And last but not least, uh, I spoke last week about Eddie Edwards and his contract, which I thought was up in January, but it's actually up in February. He was on this week's Impact Wrestling teleconference, and he was asked about his contractual status with the company, and he said that Impact has been his home for the last few years and would be his home for the foreseeable future. So I don't know how long this is going to be, but he will be sticking with the company for now. Um, he also talked about his injury and a bunch of other things that have gone on in his life, in his career. So if you guys want to take a listen to that, you can find it on YouTube. I believe the Impact Lounge has it up for your viewing. Um, that is all I have for this week, so I will see you next Thursday for my Impact Review, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.